I know a horizontal compression has taken place. I also know that you have to apply a, sp a specific um, transformation to the X and Y coordinates. So instead of multiplying, we're now going to divide your X coordinates by whatever that value is. So I'm going to divide my X coordinates. by whatever your Q value is. Divide your X coordinates. For our fifth transformation, the same instruction applies. We're still going to divide our X coordinates. However, if we had 1 over 7 as our Q value, so my Q value is in between 0 and 1. So Q value is either a fraction or a decimal. Instead of a horizontal compression, what am I going to have? What's the opposite of a compression? The stretch. Or we can call it a horizontal expansion. I'm only using that term because I believe your textbook uses horizontal stretch or expansion. Both of those terms are acceptable but you're still dividing your x-coordinates by that q value. So this is our fifth transformation. Horizontal expansion. Please do not confuse that with vertical stretch and vertical compression because they're very different things. And the most important part of all this is what do you do with your coordinates? And you're going to see why a little bit later on. So we're dividing our x coordinates by q. Okay, one more thing with our q value that I want to go over. So if I had y is equal to, but instead of a negative in front, I have my f of x but the negative is in front of the x inside the bracket. So whenever you have a negative in front of the x, but inside the bracket, we're going to have a different type of reflection. So this is called, this last time we had a reflection in the x-axis. This time this is going to be a reflection in the y-axis. Guys, stop, seriously. Reflection in the y-axis. So you cannot confuse the two different types. Otherwise, you're going to run into some problems on the test. And you also have to multiply division and multiplication when you're just multiplying by a negative number. It's the same operation. So multiply your x-coordinates by negative 1 when a reflection has taken place. Okay, so that is my sixth transformation. And so that's the end of the new transformations that, you're, that you had to learn. The, the sixth, fifth, and fourth transformations are brand new. Everything else is going to be the same, except for one little thing that I want to show you right now. So we're going to string together what we've learned so far. Okay, so if I gave you y is equal to 3 times f negative 2x minus 8. So if I gave you a transformation equation that looked like that. Most people would, on the test, I see this all the time, it's the most common mistake on the unit 10 test. They tell me, oh, my Q value, let's just change this, my Q value is negative 2. So that means a horizontal compression has taken place. How many people agree with that statement? No. Okay. So how can I, 
how, what should I do before I solve this question? Does anyone have any ideas? How can I solve this? What about X? Solve for X. What does it say on the board? Always maintain factored form. So how can I have factored form with this particular equation? How can I factor what's inside the brackets? Does anyone have an idea? What's common between negative 2x and negative 8? What do they have in common? Negative 2. Negative two. Good. So whenever you have a transformation equation, you always have to make sure that the greatest common factor has been taken out. Put big stars in front of that because that is the major trick on the Unit 10 test is the factored form part. So I would rewrite this question as 3s and then break up the back brackets. So I'd actually break it up into square brackets. And you would take the greatest common factor between negative 2 and negative 8. That's a negative 2. And so when you do that, I'm left with an x plus 4. x plus 4. So that means the, the number 3 refers to a vertical stretch by 3. What does the negative refer to inside the square brackets? Garbo, what type of reflection? This negative. We either have an x or an y axis. Reflection in the x axis. Good. And the number 2, our Q value, so remember our Q value is not negative 2. The negative always refers to the reflection. And our Q value is equal to 2. So is that a horizontal expansion or a horizontal compression? What do you think? Um, Emily, horizontal expansion or compression? when Q is equal to 2. Horizontal compression, yeah. I want you guys to pay attention over there. So horizontal compression by 2. So for the transformation, yep. But it's a reflection in the Y axis. Wait, hold on. You're right, hold on. So it's a reflection in the y-axis over here. Thank you for pointing that out. Okay, thank you. So it's a reflection in the y-axis. So horizontal compression by 2, vertical stretch by 3, and a reflection in the y-axis. So I have three different types of transformations. Remember, guys, every single transformation is worth one mark. Okay, this one, horizontal shift. When I have a negative inside of my bracket, what kind of shift is that? Horizontal shift, would I be moving left or right when there's a negative in the bracket? This is from last year. Yeah, horizontal shift right. Yeah, we're always talking about opposites. So when it, there's a negative in the bracket, we always move right by whatever the number is. And when it's a positive in the bracket, you're moving left. You guys should remember this from last year. So really make sure when you're doing your unit guide, before you go on into the more complicated assignments, that you really know all of your transformations by heart, because if you screw up on the easy stuff, it's going to be very complicated when you go move on to the new transformation. So horizontal shift left and horizontal shift right. When I'm writing the instruction, because this affects your x coordinates for horizontal shift and uh, horizontal expansions, they always affect your x coordinates. However, for this specific